Welcome to the Thought Leaders video blog, where industry executives share their insights and vision in today's landscape of live entertainment. Dr. Michael LeBron, thank you so much for joining us from Tulane on the Pacuum Thought Leaders video blog. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Yeah, we're excited. So, you know, Monica, just curious to hear how you and your staff are adapting to this shelter and home time environment and, and how are you doing personally and how is the staff doing and what strategies have you deployed to keep the team together? Yeah, so like I said, I was I was pretty nervous for myself personally because I had never really worked at home and it, so much so that when I would walk through the door, my brain would shut off. So a couple times I tried to bring work home, yeah. um, but but if, if it couldn't be done on my phone, it, it was not getting done. So of course I could do email and, and stay on text all day, all night, but I was not a work from home type. And so I just got really nervous. Um, so for me personally, I know that I'm very routine driven and I thought, okay, uh, it was a Wednesday when I found out after Friday, you cannot come back here. Um, and that was nine weeks ago and eight and a half weeks ago. And, um, so I knew for starters, I had to create a routine mm -hmm. and, uh, and for me that you have to start, I have to start my day with a workout. And so I didn't have a fitness center anymore. So what was that going to look like? And so I created these workouts. And, um, and so I found that on that first Monday, I got up at the same hour. I started my workout at 6 a.m. I was done by 7.30. And once I did that, it, it set the tone for me for the rest of the day. And that way I, I got all my Zooms. I had my energy. And I looked up and, and it was 6 o'clock. And I definitely took breaks. I took a lunch break. And, and I... I I now take afternoon breaks because I have to walk away and even just walk around the block um, and come back. So I, I do take healthy breaks. Um, but I looked up and it was 5.30, 6 o'clock and I hadn't even thought about the TV. Um, and so I keep the TV off all day and, and all of a sudden my apartment became my workspace. And so, so once I knew I was okay, then I was so concerned with our team. And oftentimes if people are struggling they're not going to ask for help or they don't know how to ask for help. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things we incorporated was a wellness survey. So um, mm. probably this was now five weeks in, six weeks in, uh, we sent out a wellness survey to the entire athletics department. And I think 75% of our team filled it out. Um, we gave a little incentive, a little gift card for, for and, and we picked the winner of everyone who submitted um, the response. And, and that allowed me to gauge how they were doing. Um, and then to ask for feedback, what are we doing as a department well? Um, where are we struggling? Where are you struggling? What do you need? And then on our all staff calls, I can address those. So, and, and it was completely anonymous. So um, that's just one piece that we incorporated that I'm so grateful we did um, because I need to know how people are doing. Because when I'm in the office, I can feel it. I can feel your energy and if, if you're feeling lethargic, then, then I'm going to pump you up. And, and when I'm not around you, I can't do that. Um, and so that's just one small thing that we incorporated. I love it. We might steal that from you. I mean, you're right. I think now everyone always says, you know, stay safe and stay sane. And the sanity is real, right? So the struggle is real to stay sane, especially when your people are perhaps, you know, either isolated or, you know, they're working at home with toddlers or things are just different. You don't have that social network. So it's very, very real right now. So that's great. I love that idea. Um, so, you know, in New Orleans specifically, and New Orleans has had some challenges in the past, right? 2005, there's Katrina. Is there anything unique or different that you're doing to communicate to Tulane fans uh, based on, you know, this pandemic that you might not be doing in a, in a different situation? I think Zoom has changed everyone's life. I remember um, someone inviting me to a Zoom call maybe even within the last year, year and a half. And, and I freaked out, like, I don't, I don't know how to get on a Zoom call. Like, what is that? Um, and now imagine, I mean, everyone knows how to use it. Um, everyone realizes they can incorporate it. Even when we do go back, this is gonna be a great way for us yeah. to communicate with donors, season ticket holders. I mean, our alumni live far away from New Orleans. A lot of them come from all over and go back to all over. Mm -hmm. So imagine our development team has, has already started to think of ways that we can use Zoom on an introductory visit, a virtual visit, so yeah. that you don't have to fly to New York just to meet people. You can meet them on Zoom, and then when you do fly there, you can actually 
create the solicitation and make the ask. Um, and so we've already begun to, to think about how we're gonna, how Zoom is here to stay. Um, but I think just, just that, um, I certainly wasn't here for Katrina, but we, we do rely on the folks, um, not just within athletics, but across our entire campus who yeah. work here. Um, and we rely on them to um, get some tips and tools on, on ways to come back. Um, you know, one of the things we're always, we always have a plan in place for when we have to evacuate because it comes every single year. Hurricane season comes every single year. Wow. And so we already have that plan in place. Obviously, we haven't evacuated the city um, in this situation, but we already have measures in place for how we handle um, catastrophes. And so, um, but you also rely on, on some of that um, institutional knowledge and that history um, so you can, and, and you allow yourself to be led, so. Yeah, wow, fantastic. So you mentioned uh, the Green Wave Club and donations and solicitations. So how is that going? Are you actively asking for donations now and have things changed, has the tone changed? I'm just curious what your process is. Yeah, you know, when we first went home, the campus was put on a solicitation freeze. So that was okay. from our president on down. Um, everyone was on a freeze until further notice. Mm -hmm. um, and then at some point, and of course, I, I meet with our development team once a week. And at some point, of maybe a few weeks in, four or five weeks in, uh, I think I got my first solicitation email. It was either from Tulane or from Yale. Um, Yale's my undergrad. Yeah. Um, and so, but I got them within even on the same day or within days of each other. And I remember whether it was the Tulane one or the Yale one, I remember getting it, reading it and thinking, wow, this was so tastefully done. In no way, shape or form was I offended. Mm -hmm. um, what I also thought about myself was, I, my, my salary hasn't changed at all. Just me personally, I have not been furloughed. I have not had a pay cut. Now a lot of people have. And heck, a lot of people are collecting unemployment. So there are people out there who are struggling. I personally have not been hit yet. And then I get this email and I'm not offended and I actually do wanna support and I'm glad they reminded me. And so that's just anecdotal and that's just one person. But I shared it with our development team, um, one to check um, to see, okay, have we lifted the freeze um, and why is this coming out? But then I also shared my own personal alumni email with, with our team as well to say, hey, when we do come back, this is a nice way of, of throwing it out there and, and putting it together. So another piece we did was we put a donor survey together. And I, I thought that was awesome. um, a great job. Athlete Viewpoint um, helped us with that. We already have a partnership with them. And, and so we worked very closely with Michael Cross and Athlete Viewpoint. Um, and at first I was a little nervous cause I thought, okay, I'm doing well, but what if other people aren't, and I don't want to offend anyone or hurt anyone's feelings or, or just be completely tone deaf. Um, and so we worked very closely with Michael. He helped guide us, Tyler Kai, um, our associate AD for development. He, he and I worked closely together on developing a survey that wasn't long, um, uh, but could gauge where people were at. Um, and, and figure out if, if this is the right climate to lift this freeze. And it came back overwhelmingly positive. Great. And so again, all these little pieces that you put together um, and then with, with the, the leadership from our central development office, um, we got to a point where, we, wait, where they lifted the freeze um, and we're actually dropping our first solicitation email, I think this week, maybe tomorrow or, or wow. Thursday. Very timely. Um, and again, it's, it's not aggressive, but it reminds people that we still need your help. And if you can help, we'd love, we'd love to have it. Um, so, you know, I think you, you need to put more than just one tool in place. There, you need to put a lot of feelers out there in order to figure out uh, where you stand. Another thing, I, I have to commend our development team. Uh, we are now down to four individuals, not counting me. So I'm, I'm five, but yeah. our development team has four professionals. And from the time we went home nine weeks ago, they already have over a thousand contacts to wow. donors, a thousand. Uh, so I could not be more proud of that team than I am now. 
um, just they answered the call, they stepped up um, under Tyler's leadership, um, Jeff Cummings, Emma Crumley, and Tyler, or, I'm sorry, Tyler Kai and, and Justin Berger. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of them. So I thank them publicly, publicly. <laughs> That's fantastic. And Tyler was on it in that webinar as well with a few others and he did a, an amazing job. So yeah. I think that was one of the first uh, NAD's um, webinar opportunities to share ideas and he was fantastic so, yes. so kudos great team what about yeah. so that's on the donor side what about on the season ticket holder side for you know next year's for fall was there any difference in communicating to them or tone or message or how did you approach that so we we did delay uh, the season ticket renewal twice already yeah um, and so that second delay um, put the deadline into June um, but we are also going to drop um, a letter this week um, that encompasses our reassurance plan. And basically what that says is we would like you to renew. We hope you renew. We're asking you to renew, but we're reassuring you that if we don't have football season, we will, and then we give them the options. We will refund your money. Uh, we will credit you 110%. Um, okay. So if they do keep their credit in there, um, we'll put it at 110%. So uh, that was a great idea from Troy Dan and our athletic director. So we're putting that in place. Um, or if they want to uh, move their the cost of their tickets and their season ticket renewal to a donation, we can make it 100% tax deductible. Um, so we're offering them options, but that reassurance plan um, is going to hopefully make them feel better. And, and so they don't have to wonder, well, am I just giving you money for no reason? Um, again, we all want and hope and pray that the football season is here, but we want them to feel that um, if it if it's not, we'll make it right. Me too. I also hope and pray the football season is here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, I love the 110% idea. That's a great idea to give them a little extra incentive. Do you think sports is like the great healer for uh, the pandemic? Um you know, you're asking a huge sports fan. So uh, <laughs> sports has been a part of my life since the day I could walk, uh, <laughs> since the day I was born. And look back on history and how sports just has a way of bringing people together, yeah. um, people from all walks of life, people from different backgrounds, people um, who believe in different things. And, uh, and it's, that, it's that great unifier um, so yes, I, I would love for it to come back. Um, and I, and I do think it would make a lot of people feel better if it did come back. Uh, so, um, is it the greatest? I'm, I'm not sure I can say that, but it's, it's a huge part of my life. And, um, I mean, I, I cannot stand watching old games. And yet every night on ESPN, I'm watching some old baseball game, Monday night football lasts every Monday. There's a old Monday night football game and um, old NBA games. So, you know, someone who never watched old games, it's like, well, if that's the best we can do, I guess I'll be watching that too. So easy what you'll watch. And yeah. I think the Michael Jordan's last dance has been riveting too. That, that just hit at the right time. And I've been glued to the couch on Sunday as well. So Monica, do you think that there's things that are happening now uh, based on creativity or necessity that, that are going to be brought forward into post-pandemic for college athletics? Again, I, I, I always want to come back to Zoom because it was just a tool that I never used. And now yeah. we can use it for just about everything. Again, I'm a, I'm a fundraiser by trade. And uh, so I really think, especially again for us, we have four, four development officers on our team. We're down two teammates. Um, for a total of six and so we can only be so many places at once and zoom is going to have to be part of our everyday and it already has become a part of our everyday so you know we're doing um, reunions with our sports teams um, we're doing donor calls uh, donor introductions um, fan engagement um, and, and advisory committee engagement uh, so I, I zoom is the one that continues to be fresh on my mind as um, this is absolutely here to stay and, and I'm so grateful I learned how to use it and and I know others are really appreciating it too. Yeah, it's very powerful. So looking at the fall, um, and I'm sure you've worked on several scenarios. Um, when do you think you're going to start to take action on one of those certain scenarios. Are you waiting for um, Louisiana's governor or 
um, NCAA or what do you think is the trigger for you to take action in one of those scenarios? Yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> um, and it's definitely not going to be the deputy at Tulane that, that makes the call. Um, but, you know, I'm overly optimistic. I don't know how to get out of bed without thinking that I'm going to win every game or beat COVID-19, whatever it is. So, yes, we're going to have football. And, yes, it's going to look exactly the same and it's going to be awesome. With that being said, you have to pr prepare and plan for every scenario. So it's not that I don't plan or prepare, uh, but in, I, I believe in positive thinking. And, and so I have to continue to think that way that, you know, we're going to play that first game and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to think any other way. We're going to have fans. It's going to be great. But that doesn't mean we don't plan for, okay, what if our, uh, stadium is is either no fans or limited capacity have we already renewed more tickets than the capacity um, that allows for six feet in between um, have we already renewed more than that capacity and, and if so what's our plan um, who's on the priority list how do we refund those folks um, how do we divide the games in in that certain season ticket holders can come to one game but not another to be fair to everyone Yes, <laughs> plan for all of that, ready, go. Um, but you know what, and I, I've said this on another call before, is that you don't want to work on your team culture and staff culture, and you don't wanna surround yourself with really, really strong teammates during crisis. <laughs> you wanna make sure you did that leading up to crisis, and thankfully we had. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. that's when, you know, once you do reach crisis mode, that strong culture and those great teammates come into play more than ever because I can't do it alone. Troy Dannon can't do it alone. President Fitz can't do it alone. We all need to play a role. Okay, so you work on the seating plan. You work on the donor plan. You work on the marketing plan. And, and we all have our role. And then we come back together and figure out what's best for Tulane Athletics and Tulane University. But I'm, I'm grateful that we have such a strong culture in place and that we have st such strong teammates to tackle some of those. That's awesome. And a strong culture um, derives from strong leadership. So what's your methodology and strategy for leadership? How do you personally lead and kind of what's your vision for that? I've always been one that one is going to lead by example. Mm -hmm. um, two, again, this, this was established from the day I stepped foot on Tulane's campus is that I'm gonna be in the trenches with you. I'm gonna roll up my sleeves with you and I'm never gonna ask you to do anything that I wouldn't do as well. Mm -hmm. And so I try to lead in that sense that I'm constantly present. Um, so we, I, I love that Troy incorporated this right when we went home, we incorporated two calls per week via Zoom that include all staff. Awesome. Now, what's crazy is that they're not mandatory. They're Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. They're not mandatory. And yet, of our 130 staff, we have over 100 every single call. And what came back on this, the wow. wellness survey, yeah, what came back on the wellness survey was that they appreciated those calls. They appreciate the transparency. They appreciate the engagement. And so, again, being present. And when you can't be present present in the Wilson Center in the athletic department, we're still finding a way to be present and be visible on these Zoom calls. So again, it goes back to Zoom as well, but I'm so grateful that Troy had that idea um, and, and that people wanted it and people have appreciated it um, and, and they appreciate being kept in the know. Um, and sometimes it's, I don't know, <laughs> you know, you, you yeah. don't always have to have the answer, but when I see your face and we're going through this together, that's that's leadership. That's just I, hey, I'm I'm right here with you. I mean, you can see my face, and I'm present. Um, so that's that's the try the type of leader I try to be. Um, and again, now I'm taking notes for when I become an AD. Okay, if ever in crisis mode and we're sent home, we got to use Zoom. We got to we yeah. got to everyone's <laughs> got to see your face um, and constant communication, even if the answer is I don't know. Great. I love it. So, and you talked about Tyler and Troy and some of your staff. So what do you look for in up and coming leaders when you're looking to acquire new talent? I look for a teammate first. And so 
for me, great teammates are, are people who are reliable and dependable. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I mean, we've hired, since I've been here, I'm, I'm about to complete my fourth year. Um, Troy's about four and a half. Um, and so I'd say over 80% of our athletic department since Troy got here four and a half years ago is new. So a lot of people, a lot of candidates came through my desk and sat at my little table. And those were the two things I looked for, reliability, and dependability because when you get into crisis mode can i count on you yeah can i rely on you mm -hmm. are you going to have my back and to me that's that shows great leadership is is being there for one another um hard work dedication um being all in for tulane athletics so that's certainly what i look for in in great leadership is are you a great teammate first and foremost mm -hmm. um because to me especially in the world of athletics everything stems from there 100 percent. and you mentioned uh being an ad one day which you no doubt will be so how do we as a community level up diversity across the board do you have recommendations talk about it yeah and i mean i pause because that's not easy for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really easy for me. <laughs> I wrote an entire dissertation on bias and um, diversity or lack thereof. Um, and, and so it's not hard for me to talk about. So then I have to be a leader in making it comfortable to talk about. Mm -hmm. And what I like to say is the conversation about diversity shouldn't come when you're about to hire someone. That shouldn't be when we're talking about it. Right. We, we can talk about it on a random Tuesday at some random staff meeting. You know, just talk about it all the time. Because when you talk about it all the time, you make it more comfortable for people who aren't comfortable to talk about it. Right. You ease them into that comfort level. And then, so that when you do have a job on the line, you do post a job or you put a, um, candidate pool together and you ultimately make a hire, it doesn't have to be that uncomfortable situation right then and there. Right. Uh, and so again, it's, it's constantly sharing my knowledge in a comfortable environment uh, with my teammates. And then just, again, hoping that they'll carry that to when I'm not around, you know, so that, that they'll continue the conversation um, in smaller groups with, with their own teams. So just constant communication. And I think that creates education. I love it. So Monica, thank you so much for being on the Paculum Thought Leaders video blog. You are absolutely fantastic. And it's a pleasure to, to chat with you. Well, thank you. Thanks for the invite. This was fun. Always love helping Paculum. Oh, one thing we are implementing is That's mobile ticketing. So, oh, fantastic. You know, our partnership with you guys has been absolutely amazing and we appreciate the guidance that that's going to be new for our season. Some of our season ticket holders, it'll be new. Um, but, but sometimes, um, again, in, in this crisis mode, uh, we, we probably are implementing something more quickly than we thought we would, but I think it's going to be a great tool and, and we appreciate Pat Yolen's guidance on it and, and y'all's leadership. And, um, we, we love the partnership with you guys. So thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks so much, Monica. All right. See you later. Thank you for joining the Thought Leaders video blog. And remember, everyone can step up and be a leader in their own way. We look forward to seeing you next time.